Welcome to the Hello First Name Podcast. The Hello First Name Podcast revolves around the term personalization and is brought to you by marketing author Rasmus Holin, founder of Omnichannel Institute and chief experience officer at the marketing automation software company Agilic. The podcast is based on the book Hello First Name. Each episode is based in turn on a chapter from the book, followed by a discussion of the very same chapter with an expert marketing practitioner in the following episode. As always, you can buy the book on Amazon or other bookstores. You can also choose to listen to it all for free on your favorite podcast service. You're also very welcome to download the abstract of the book for free, and all models, of course, are able to download. All downloads are sponsored by Agilic. I'll make sure to put a link to everything in the show notes. But you can always connect on LinkedIn, and I'll be happy to reply and help out. Hello, and welcome to the Hello First Name podcast. Today, we'll be discussing Chapter 8 from the book, um, Hello First Name, namely Content Part 1, Messages. We'll be doing that together with uh, Dordi Carlson, previous head of data and insights at Storyhouse Egmont, and currently a senior advisor at the agency web 2 media so uh, we're going to explore how a daughter has seen different message variants contribute to a better and more personalized and profitable customer experience. Hopefully, at least that's what we get to find out. Daughter, welcome on the show. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, daughter, your resume has uh, it seems to have a CRM written all over it. I mean, from uh, uh, your CRM position at the Workers' Union uh, HK, and uh, head of data and insights at Storyhouse Eggman, and now senior advisor at the web to media But in your own words, can you tell a bit about yourself and your career? Yeah, of course. Um, for uh, the last 15 years, it's been all about customer experience and customer loyalty for me. Uh, mostly in some kind of subscription business. Uh, I love talking about how to increase customer loyalty uh, mm. and how to create this yeah relationship with your customers um i used to present myself as a data geek marketing profile uh, i thrive in the field between data it and uh, sales marketing as an example of this when i first started at uh, hoko uh, danish union uh, i showed up at the e- it department on one of my first day asking for an overview of the it system landscape and a data model and they were just like staring at me, asking, okay, as I was a stranger and saying, okay, aren't you the new employee from marketing? What are you doing down here? But uh, it's so before important. Before GDPR days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it's so important for me to break down the silos between these departments. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, it's hard to work with, uh, with customer experience and customer loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. Truly, I I cannot uh, I cannot disagree with that. Uh, things have changed. Uh, obviously, I think today a lot of IT departments they have had to care more about data and GDPR and marketing data, getting not only a hold of and being able to manage transactional data, but also all the, all the data that we're actually using in personalization and in in customer communication. Dot. Apart from uh, you being here today to discuss the chapter, you are actually also uh, one of uh, part of one of the expert panels for Hello First Name here in Copenhagen regarding uh, personalization and, and what that mm-hmm. is. So, uh, so re- regarding the term personalization, uh, what does that mean to you? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, for me, personalization means. Uh, tailoring marketing message product or services to the individual customers or human based on their profile data preferences behavior or mm. something like that and then provides via personalization uh, provides more individualized experience for each customer yeah and uh, hope you agree that, yeah I, I do <laughs> uh, it, it's also very very broad uh, the way that you describe it, uh, and indeed also the way that we we define it uh, in the book, and I actually think that's that may be one of the the issues with personalization that it is so broad. How easy do you find the conversations with uh, colleagues and clients around the the term personalization without, I mean, without having any misunderstandings? How easy is it to to have an aligned conversation about this topic? Yeah. Um... I mean, sometimes they get mixed up with the difference of segmentation and personalization, where the segmentation is a more broader way of, you know, combining your customers into groups. And that's often a bit more easier to people. 
uh, and personalization is more, you know, communication to a direct customers. But I, my experience is though that most people can define what personalization is, but the hard part is to actually get it done in practice. Mm. So yeah. often when I'm at the conference speak as a speaker, they come up to people, come up to me afterwards asking, okay, it looks so nice in those slides, but, uh, but how do we get started? Where do we yeah. start? And what, what do you tell them then? Well, I tell them that a good start is to map what you know about your customers and what you don't know about your customers. So get to learn, learn how to know your data and map your data models and your IT landscape and, mm. uh, and figure out what data points you have that you can use most easily and then start testing off. Test, yeah. measure, learn is uh, yeah. always a good way to start to yeah. see if you can create uh, good results. Because I mean, some also say that I, I, I generally agree with you that it's a, it's a good place to start to find out what do we actually know about our customers. Some do it the other way around and say, okay, how would we like the customer journey to be? And then sort of a reverse engineer going back to what you were telling here. I mean, for which sort of the of these moments of truth do we have the data and where don't we have the data? Hmm. But I guess that's actually also what you are you're referring to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in uh, in Hoko, we did uh, we mapped uh, the whole customer journey with all the touch points. But I will yeah. get back to examples of this and how we okay. used the uh, personalized messages uh, after mapping a customer journey. Ooh, yeah, cliffhanger, huge cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so coming back to the the bow tie of personalization and uh, which is the main model from from Hello First Name. So in the book, we we have this distinction between uh, the two content types, uh, namely messages and content feeds. How, mm. how do you see the distinction between the two, and can we can maybe relate to maybe mm. some examples from your past or from existing clients and so on, where you're using the two different types of content? Mm. Uh, well, for me, content is the author or uh, the story you want to tell, and the message mm. is more how you're going to tell it. Yeah. If you're gonna going to do it in different ways to different customer types. So for example, uh, if you have a branding video, then that's the content. And you can show it, of course, with different pictures or different uh, headlines or so. But if the video is pushed at a specific time, maybe based on a life cycles touch point or something, then and and we also um thing with the communication and the motivation for seeing the video in a personalized way, then I see it as a as a message and then we personalize the message for this brand video or what else we want the customers to see. Okay. So the uh, and, and how was how, how do you have some examples of, of content feeds? How how what was a content feed in the case of a uh, of HK Hoko? Uh, or in the case of Egmont, which kind yeah, of content feeds did you have there? Yeah, in Egmont we had, because it was a publishing house, so we had yeah. a lot of content articles. So yeah. we had content feed of articles. But it wasn't always, you know, the newest or the most read that was relevant for all our customers. Yeah. So uh, according to the personas we did or uh, or your interest or former clicks, both in email or in websites. We did the website tracking, so we did yeah. interest on behalf of that. So we did, we, we, uh, yeah, we did, the, we showed different articles based on yeah. your interest in or your yeah. behavior. Whereas the, the movie that you were talking about is totally different type of, of content. Exactly. We had uh, Egmont is a foundation, so we wanted people to know that that it was for a greater purpose. So we want to yeah. stall, tell the branding story, but we yeah. did it in different ways. Um, okay. Whether you were <laughs> one customer type or the other. You can tell tell me a bit more more about that. So so we have like one message, which is the 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 core idea of Egmont, and that it's on a foundation. And you were telling that in different ways. That sounds very much to to me like like personalization. Can you tell a bit more about that? Yeah, it is. So, I mean, I would prefer, for instance, in a in a marketing automation win back flow. Imagine if you could just uh, do a picture of a crying uh, children in Denmark saying, "Okay, <laughs> now that you have uh, that you have cancelled your subscription, then you are blamed for this child uh, have no uh, <laughs> no school education." But of course, we couldn't do it. But oh. we know the the motivation factors for different people. Some is yeah. price, some is convenience, some is 
doing something for the greater good. So we yeah. describe the different personas that we have in Egmont and describe the motivation as well. So, of course, telling the story about a foundation was different based on yeah. what their motivation factor was. So you're using what different images or are you a different tone of voice or how would you, how actually, would you, how would the different actually, versions be? Yeah, actually, it was both different images. Some was at what the what the purpose was, so that we uh, get more children to school uh, yeah. in Denmark, or whether it was, you know, the more talk about it, this is just how it is, and not that yeah. much focusing on what the foundation did. Just that yeah. us earning money went back to doing something good. So Excellent. that's why, you know, kind of your the price is so high or you should keep reading. <laughs> so, yeah, the motivation yeah. was uh, is different from people, from, uh, from okay, yeah. all subscribers. So, so you would highlight highlight the different causes that Egmont was supporting that you figured would best match the uh, the segment in the other end. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Uh, how about the same for for marketing automation? Did how how you worked with with different messages for for different moments of truth? I know you did a, actually a lot of marketing automation both in in HK and in uh, in Ekman. Yeah. Um, well, the 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 example of doing it with campaign messages in uh, in Egmont was, uh, for example, Mother's Day. We have this campaign newsletters, broad news newsletters, which every company has. The hard part mm. is to combine sure? the market, yeah, combine the marketing automation with their the with the uh, broadcast newsletters. So, for yeah. instance, at Mother's Day, so we send a newsletter. But the message was was different whether we were talking to the mom itself saying, okay, you should buy yourself yeah. a gift or yeah. the father saying on yeah. behalf of your children, remember to buy your uh, wife a gift or yeah. we communicated actually to children saying, okay, you can buy your mother uh, this, uh, this gift for Mother's Day. So based on sense. their earlier purchases and subscriptions yeah. and whether they were a mother or father of children, the, the, the message was different. And it makes total sense. Yeah. And Hoko. Good example. We did it in. Miley uh, Cyrus would be proud. Uh, yeah. I can buy myself flowers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, in Hoko, then we get back to this mapping of the customer journey. So mm -hmm. we identified our pain points and were able to optimize these pain points that we saw. A specific touch point uh, that was a huge um, pain points and a huge driver for churn was when people finished their education. Yeah. So in under uh, when you are in school, then um, being a member of Hoko is free of charge yeah really? then you gra you graduate and you finish school and then suddenly you just get a payment charge for 1000 danish kroners and of course yeah. people churn if they haven't uh -huh. learned what the purpose and what we can give them for uh, creating value so yeah, actually we looked yeah. we looked in data uh saying okay everybody who's churned at this specific date then we uh, took data six months back and learned the what have they done? What web pages did they visit? What did they mm. ask a customer service about? And all the things that we learned out of the data, we used it to communicate before they actually get graduated so that we were able to create uh, more value in marketing automation flows for all people who are going to graduate. So six months before, telling them that if you don't get a job afterwards, then we're going to help you all the way. And it's the same people that you meet in school School. So we have these uh, consultants being on their on their school, so they know them. So uh, so hi. That's how uh, how it is when you have a sick daughter at home while doing. That's podcasts. how it is when you have a sick daughter at home. Yeah, yeah this will be a sticker shot, a money shot for the uh, for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Just coming back from a small interruption. Um, daughter, we were talking about graduation time for the time of graduation for, for the members, uh, the student members of HK and all the data you had for finding out what they've been looked at, looking at and what they've been doing and, and all the behavioral data that you had in the profile data. 
can you tell us a bit more how you activated that data in in the actual mm. uh, in which messages did you put in front mm. of them in in the marketing automation flows? Yeah, so one of the ideas that came up when we did a brainstorming was actually uh, inventing a personal contact person that mm. followed them right from the uh, six months before, or they have seen this persons in the in their in their schools mm. so for instance we had this girl called maria who was a consultant so in the footer of every uh, marketing automation it was uh, sincerely maria uh, her personal number saying she existed she yeah she person. existed yeah. so they have yeah. met her in the school and they know yeah. that they could call her if they had any question another problem that we saw was that in a union uh, people often working there isn't that young. So mm. for young people to call customer service, talking to maybe a pretty old person, uh, yeah. could Not have a barrier. Fresh. Yeah, could have a barrier yeah. and understanding he just needs. So yeah. Maria understood every student's needs. So, so for them to know that she would be following them also after their graduation, Maybe yeah. being new in a job or maybe it doesn't yeah. have a job at all. So until six months after their graduation was made a total sense. huge impression and yeah. was reducing churn uh, with a with a great amount. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And I think we're we're coming back to also discussing the different ways that a message can provide value. And I think this particular message that Maria will be there and she speaks mm. your language, she knows who you are and she understands your pains as a, as a student and as a young person. I think that's that's a great, I mean, the the value you're creating with that is basically the sense of feeling safe and feeling heard and feeling acknowledged and not being alienated by this big old union a monster that may seem like a blast from the past for, for many young people. I think yeah, that's, exactly. that's a brilliant example mm. of, of how to create alternative value. So you give them the safety and then in return they reward mm. you with uh, with loyalty or with not not leaving you yeah we actually did a test on this uh, specific um uh, thing that we did with the with the with maria saying okay some didn't get the communication that mm. just got the normal communi- communication and a group got yeah. the one where she was in the footer always saying you can yeah. just contact me and mm. the third group actually got offered a coaching session session both up to their graduation and their exam, but also mm-hmm. afterwards being this kind of underdog on a new uh, working place or uh, yeah. didn't get a job at all. So we saw significant results from those who have actually had a um, a coaching session, coaching but session, yeah. it was too expensive, so we couldn't uh, we couldn't perform it for everybody. But that, yeah. but I mean, this talks into getting to know your customers. Of be course, able yeah, to yeah. personalize it even more. And as I understand it, the uh, like the lifetime value of a union member is through the roof. I mean, once they're in and they, mm. they, they stay there, then normally they can become members for, for many, many years. So yeah. the, the I think the looking at the cost of a lifetime value and what you can actually, what it makes sense to invest in that relationship is pretty it's probably a pretty good payback uh, on that if if you consider the long term. Yeah, and it's a lead flow that uh, that most company doesn't have. Saying okay, we have all these free yeah. members of uh, of, yeah. of of, of uh, students, and then we just have to convert them into being uh, full paid members. Yeah. Hmm. How how did you uh, did you use different channels for this? It could also be on a, an example from uh, from Storyhouse Egmont. Mm. Have, have you worked with sort of reusing messages across you know different emails or across different channels? Yes, we did. For instance, this is school again. So we went through all the physical letters that we sent out, saying, "Okay, mm. is this in the right?" Uh, is the right language? Do we speak the young people yeah. language? And actually, yeah. we did some uh, personalization as well, uh, according to where they were in their in their life cycles and how yeah. close they were to the graduation. And also, when actually Maria was out at the schools, she had different mm-hmm. flyers. Whether she was talking to people who just started or people who uh, soon graduated. 
So we did it with the physical, of course, also with the paid ads, uh, yeah. saying creating value for those who who were soon to uh, to graduate. Yeah. So basically, the the same message is about you can feel safe in times of graduation. Um, but we, you had that in different variants for like different segments, but also for different channels, some for handing out physically and some for even the paid ads or some for the emails, yeah. I would suppose. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So, uh, talking about value, uh, mm. I mean, there's also, and we already touched uh, briefly uh, upon this. So, so, the, so the right message, uh, should generate value, of course, for the company, or there's no point uh, in doing this in the first place. Yeah. But then looking at value creation from a customer perspective, that mm. can become a bit more, I think that's, a, that's a broader topic. It's not mm. always about either the money now or the money later. Mm. It's much more about all kind of other things uh, as well. We talked about this idea of uh, this Maria persona mm. and this like speaking in the, uh, in, in sort of in the same mm. uh, tone of voice as these young people were young to how that was giving them a sense of, of safety. Uh, do you have any other examples from your from past where the with the message that you pushed to the customers where it, it wasn't for chasing the conversion mm. or asking for the money mm. but just being like genuinely helpful mm. uh, uh, to start uh, in my point it's uh, it should be two sides of the same coin because everybody knows <laughs> that uh, creating more value for your customers uh, should be generate more value for business as well. So at least in the sense of true customer loyalty, then, uh, then all I don't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it should be, uh, should be the same, but for instance, in, uh, in Egmont, we did a satisfaction survey for all our customers in all our publications. So we learned that the subscribers for Donald Duck, which is a children, uh, magazine in Denmark, uh, yeah, so cartoon, yeah. I think that, uh, <laughs> most know, uh, were unsatisfied <laughs> because of the plastic. So you have this plastic toy wrapped in plastic mm. and the whole yeah. magazine with the toys is also in plastic. Okay. So we learned that yeah. a lot of people did comment on this plastic situation living in the world where we want to take care of yeah. the world and everything. Uh, so yeah. we did a brainstorming on what can we do to increase customer satisfaction within this plastic situation. So we came up and, and invented a subscription for Donald Duck without the plastic. Without the gift. Yes, yeah. and without the gift, of course. So we communicated yeah. this to all the subscribers saying, okay, we got this feedback. We have listened to you. So now mm. we want to offer you to transform your subscription into one without any plastic. The funny mm. part was that all our customer scored a higher uh, satisfaction score. So overall, the satisfaction score increased together with the customer lifetime. So there were subscribers yeah. for and a you lifetime. you didn't have to give the plastic either. No, yeah, yeah, we wish so. But it was kind of preventful because no, almost yeah. to nobody changed their subscription into one without plastic. So, I mean, ah. it was it was really funny inside. So, so we kind of did something to prevent it but people didn't change the action yeah. i mean when you come home from uh, from That's interesting. yeah it's really you come home from yeah. work monday and if you can buy yeah. you know half an hour quiet with your children while they playing with the toys maybe it's a good idea <laughs> after all uh, yeah. but it 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 did that we increased the satisfaction and the lifetime value so this was an example of creating value for your customers and also yeah. for your company Without actually doing anything else than just letting people yeah, so know, just just the message. Yeah, yeah, we, we're just letting them know we yeah. hear what you're saying, and we actually are willing yeah. to change something that we do within our company. We have done mm -hmm. your insights. That's really fun because there's this 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 also. I think this this points to the fact that there's a difference between what people say mm. they want and what they really want. Mm. So basically, what they thought they want is that they wanted. A magazine without the plas mm. plastic gifts, but in in real life, they actually kind of did want mm -hmm. the toy. They just wanted you to be a socially responsible company that didn't necessarily always uh, send these plastic toys along. Yeah. Uh, and just the fact that they knew that you were a responsible company made their 
net promoter score or their their satisfaction mm. go up. Yeah. That's um and I think that in Denmark uh people just want to be heard. People want if they have something that they want to come up with, uh something mm. they're unsatisfied with, they want to, you know, they want to be heard and and I say okay, let's give them a virtual hug. Let him, they know that we hear yeah. what they're saying. So that creates a, a greater customer experience. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, so not always ask. I think this 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 thing about um uh, about doing automation or, or, or doing advertising or uh, always chasing the conversion. I think this also comes maybe from a more like an e-commerce mm-hmm. world where every single I mean a uh, People start with the abandoned basket flow, and then they set up a, a, a welcome flow, and it's all about mm. chasing the conversion. It's all always about getting the right offer there and a good deal, and getting the first purchase. Once you have the first purchase, you need to chase the second purchase, and so on. And I think throughout, a, maybe this is this is probably different from from a subscription based companies, but a lot of the retailers, at least when they get started with marketing automation or with personalization, they're really doing everything they can to chase the conversion. Always mm-hmm. go for the money. So if you have like 100 different touch points in the customer lifecycle, they would always mm-hmm. start by tapping into the mm-hmm. ones where they could ask for a purchase mm-hmm. or where they could give a good deal. Where maybe sometimes, and this is what I hear you're saying, sometimes maybe lean back a bit and uh, I mean, do the do what's mm. right for the customer, and then ask for the mm. money later. So at least not every single interaction is you asking for someone uh, mm. to to make a purchase when maybe they already yeah. did, uh, and and the time for the second purchase is, is just not yeah. right right around yeah, the corner. Yeah, true. I see it uh, as well as as you have to move from the product sale. So it's always been like that for e-commerce company as well, saying okay, we have a product. Let's find the customers that want this product. Why don't move to see, okay, we have a customer. What do they want? Mm. And maybe it's not a product. Maybe yeah. it's a storytelling. Tra- yeah. If you are a physical yeah. store at a, at a street in the center of a town, you don't go out in the street pulling p- customers in saying, ah, I have to pay this pair of trousers that, <laughs> that I want to sell you. No, yeah. people come in yeah. your store and then you ask them, how can I help you? And maybe they just exactly, cold yeah. outside. They want to get heated up or they want to chat. I remember when I worked at Balance Katina, uh, we had customers yeah. calling into customer service asking what time it was. It was, you know, lonely people <laughs> that just want to talk. So you never know what people want when they enter your store. And in a physical store, you yeah. ask them, why don't you ask them in marketing yeah. automation as well? Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Coming back to to today's topic around uh, the message. Uh. So, uh, so with the, I mean, we've already had uh, kids uh, on the show today here, actually. Uh, so, so when I talk to my kids and I want to get them to do a specific thing, or whenever um, in a company you want customers to do a specific thing, or um, then at least uh, here at my place, uh, having different variants or saying things in different ways even though if the base basic the i mean is the same thing that i want i want them to clean their room or whatever or to get out of bed then saying that in in many different ways can be a good thing did you ever try that tactic in in your professional yeah, life yeah actually i did because you also with children know that you have to deliver the same messages several times because before they actually understand yeah. what to do <laughs> so i think it's the same thing with yeah. your customers so in egmont being a subscription business, not having product in your shelves like you have in a supermarket, for instance. Yeah. But we did the same thing uh, anyway. So I wanted my team to list all the products, products that we have uh, that created yeah. more. Like the call to action. Yeah, but or... it could be maybe we have some, you know, the things that created more customer loyalty or more engagement. So if you have, if okay. we learn that. Yeah. A specific payment method uh, created more yeah. uh, longer co- uh, customer lifetime. Then, of course, we wanted to yeah. convert them to a different payment uh, method. Yeah. But we also have yeah. videos, interacting with our listening to podcasts, yeah. buying uh, yeah. uh, from the benefit shop that we had. That being a subscriber, yeah. you can get a get a vase yeah. for cheaper than if you buy it in a store. So yeah. we listed, and I think that we came up with 
30 things that we have on the shelves in our e-commerce company. Yeah. And then... Stuff that you can motivate people to yeah, do. And you exactly. know that great. Uh, exactly. And then we have our uh, personas combined with the individual interest and behavioral data. So we did this. I think that we generated 168 different messages for the same content, uh, but uh, communicated in different ways. So talking to a segment yeah. that we called Hygge Denmark, who was the elder and what their motivation yeah. was, had to be uh, delivered yeah. in a different way uh, than communicating to, for, for example, Kulturliden, which was the more younger, yeah. the you know, into new tech things. So yeah, we had this yeah. uh, this uh, 168 different types of content. So instant creating an email, it would look at okay, which content is prioritized for this mm. specific customers, which segment, with personas does it uh, does it fit into, and what are the specific uh, customers' interests. And then we created the email be on behalf of that. And actually, we had KPIs that weren't that wow. business yeah. value related. We wanted them to be more engaged because we know that the more engaged mm. uh, our subscribers was, the longer lifetime. Yeah. And that's back to the to the yeah. to the two sides of the same coin kind of theory, saying yeah. okay. So at the end, of course, it was to generate more. Uh, more uh, business value but we diff did it in a more yeah. sophisticated way i think by con communicating about yeah. engagement and storytelling so let me just wrap up so basically what you did you had all these things that you could have people do which was basically mm -hmm. part of your offering from uh, from mm -hmm. storyhouse egmont and then depending on which segment mm -hmm. the customer belonged to you would have different versions of motivating them to do yeah. that particular thing that you knew would, at least on a statistical level, drive mm. higher stickiness and better cost. Not only in you. segments, also personalized on the specific individual behavior, like tracking, for instance, which size are they into fashion yeah. or makeup or travel or children. Uh, so, so that was yeah. a factor as well. Yeah. Great. I think this. Uh, so, so uh, a few weeks back, I had uh, Peter Anas Frank from uh, from Metas on the show. They actually, I think, they were working somewhat with the same. Or they are working somewhat with the same that you described here. And them being a retailer, they found that if they can increase the mm. engagement, and they have all these things that they can motivate people to do, which doesn't necessarily have to be about buying uh, other stuff. It can be about buying from multiple mm. categories and such. But they found that if they can, if they can increase mm. the engagement. They have proven that they can also mm. increase the customer lifetime value, and which I think is mm. crazy interesting because this is really where you can then mix the different ways mm. of creating value. So if we do what's right mm. for the customers, they will mm. reward us in the long term. We may not be able to notice that in the short mm. term in terms of conversion rate optimization and so on and so on. But this is really where the mm. emotional customer loyalty, where they feel hurt, and this is where mm. the, the personalization yeah. really kicks in. I think that's crazy so interesting. Imagine could be the danger, of course, also that you could have some examples where more engagement doesn't create higher customer lifetime value. I, I cannot come up with anything right now. I think yeah. it's, you need to prove it somehow with the, with the, yeah, the exactly. correlations. Yeah, exactly. But imagine a family having one subscription, for instance, for your wife. She had a subscription for Alpha yeah. Damon. And then you can read your man yeah. on your tablet digital and your children can read Donald Duck without yeah. paying for it. So now yeah. we don't actually have more business value, but you go and tell your children yeah. that you're going to stop your subscription and they can't read Donald Duck anymore. And s seeing your daughter with yeah. the big <sighs> eyes looking at you say, oh, no, dad, it would, it yeah. would, you know, yeah. take some efforts from you. Yeah. Of so course of course would. you have a longer yeah. lifetime. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, I have subscriptions that I cannot yeah. turn off. So, yeah. so Spotify. I mean, all my kids are using it, and my wife and I. So, not a simple decision. People mm. have built up their playlists and so on. So, even though a playlist doesn't create yeah. more value for Spotify, just the fact that it is there, it yeah. provides more sure. stickiness. Interesting. Um, mm. On a more general level, have you used the option of changing the the communication channel depending on the on the yeah. segments? Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, working with personas and other segmentation, both in Coop, Hoko, and Egmont, uh, this persona was enriched by the 
di digital consumption and preferences. And then we communicated in their specific preferred channel. An example is this, when you have customers that opt out from their content, their marketing content, instead of just going sending them mm. to a landing page saying, okay, you now unsubscribe from our newsletters, see you never. Yeah. Uh, then maybe you can yeah. you can give them an option <laughs> of choosing well. another channel saying, okay, if it fits them more to yeah. follow on Facebook or Instagram or whatever channel, mm -hmm. uh, SMS, whatever their needs are, or maybe also from the frequency saying, okay, okay, I regret yeah. uh, unsubscribing because I just want a newsletter once a month with the best topics. So going from, you know, clicking yeah. on an yeah. unsubscribe list and to a landing page saying, okay, now you're an unsubscribe, then giving them a chance saying, okay, are you sure? Are you just, you, you would just want a fewer frequency or uh, follow us on the channel. So giving them options. Yeah. 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 I think that's a that's a beautiful way of not always saying not not always getting the big no, but maybe getting another kind of yes exactly. or a smaller kind of yes. And if you're into retaining customers or subscribers or winning them back later, that, mm. that's always exactly. a good idea. Right, we're we're about mm -hmm. the coming to the end here, Doris. So I have mm -hmm. a, one final question for you, which is <laughs> um, the one that I always uh, ask at the, at the end of the uh, the episodes. So. As a customer, uh, as a consumer, mm. what's your own favorite example of personalization yeah. that you've uh, I have a lot of examples, but for my yeah, I know for my <laughs> daily great. day, my my greatest example is namely.com. I'm uh, <laughs> yes, online, online grocery, grocery retailer. Retail, yeah. I'm yeah, a heavy user and a VIP customers. I rarely step into a physical supermarket anymore. So they have all my data. <laughs> I've said yes to everything. All members of my family has downloaded the app. We use it as a grocery list, which means if my son wants me to buy something, then he just added in the in the shopping uh, in the in the basket. Yes, and it's my husband card, yeah, does smart. as well. And yeah. then we, you know, maybe two, three, four times a week, then we um, then we actually submit and we get uh, yeah groceries delivered. Out, yeah. And yeah. the best part is that they know that my motivation is convenience. I don't want to spend any time yeah. going to a supermarket uh, at five o'clock with people with crying kids or standing in line. My my, yeah, my time is too, uh, too precious <laughs> for me to do other stuff. So so if, when yeah. I you know search for milk, then it's my kind of milk that they know I buy every time that's on the first. So yeah. I normally I sit in vegans and I yeah. tell my husband, okay, I will go grocery shopping now. And then I just go to the couch and it's really yeah. fast because, you know, what we need uh, during the last yeah. couple of days are in the basket. And I just search and then all my favorite product come up as the first uh, one to choose. So namely.com, yeah, same day delivery is for yeah. me. Convenience Big is uh, is uh, the convenient. main factor for yeah. being. It's actually kind of fun because we had the um, for one of the uh, the expert panels, uh, we had um, we had the, the the chief the previous mm. uh, chief commercial officer mm. from uh, from Namely dot com. Uh, I think we were discussing content feeds because that that's very much the content that they have. They don't do a lot of stuff about uh, you know all mm. the. Cr creative messaging and stuff that you can do and so on and so on. They're very much into, so you come to namely.com, you come there for the products. So the way that they're mainly working with personalization is mm. namely that of content feeds. How can they mm. decide which shelves to put in front of you? So, I mean, we all know this thing about shopping mm. at a supermarket that you're not familiar with. It takes you ages because they sorted the shelves differently than what you normally do. But namely.com are doing this actually really great on the on the super category pages, sorting the product uh, subcategory pages uh, differently and, and doing that in a personalized way and also marking up all the products that you normally buy I mean your favorites and so on so that's actually mm -hmm. one of the ways that, that they're going to uh, that mm -hmm. they that they're working with personalization and we're going to cover that mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a later episode so uh, thank you very much for being on the show Dorte and uh, I will uh, see you, you all there soon bye bye thank you for listening in on this episode of Hello First Name Remember that all models and even a written abstract of the book are available for download. Do find the link in the show notes. In our next episode, which is a classical audiobook chapter, 
we'll be listening to chapter 9, Personalization in Campaigns. How does personalization create extra value in campaigns? Which extra revenue is there to get? How can you even save money and resources? In other words, which levers do you pull to profit from personalization in campaigns?